All right. Now uh, we're going to solve a kind of problem, a thermal stress problem, that really uh, is much easier to solve using the force method. So we can get some sense of why uh, we might want to use the, that force method. Uh, and so what is, um, <laughs> I, was, I hate teaching this equation in intro to physics because it's so dull. <laughs> I don't know why I think, we have other linear equations, I don't know why I think this one's boring. Uh, but what this says is that the change in the length of uh, an object is going to be equal to the change in its temperature times its, uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion times the length of a rod. So, you know, we think of like a, if you've seen the gaps in, in bridges, those are there because you can, uh, if that bridge expands as it will when it gets hot, uh, you don't want it to buckle. Uh, you don't want it to crack because those, um, uh, the different parts of the bridge are pressing against each other. And so this is our uh, equation for one dimensional thermal expansion. Uh, but we're going to make it, uh, you know, more exciting here because we're going to talk about, well, what happens if we actually have two things holding on on each side uh, and we try to get some kind of thermal expansion? Um, you know, maybe it, maybe it blows up, <laughs> maybe it cracks, maybe we can actually break something, right? Um, so now we're going to take that equation and we're going to put it between two immovable objects. So let's, let's see what happens when that happens. All right, so here we are. Uh, we've got a steel bar in normal Illinois uh, that is constrained to fit between two fixed supports like this. Okay. Uh, when the temperature is 60 degree Fahrenheit, but in <laughs> 30 years when we live in an apocalyptic wasteland and the temperature reaches 120 degrees, uh, what's going to happen to that bar? Uh, it's not going to matter because of the apocalyptic wasteland, all that stuff, you know, everything's going to be falling down anyway. Uh, no, that's not. <laughs> Let's not get too dark about that. Uh, but what's going to happen if we expand that bar while uh, it's between two immovable supports? Um, so static equations, no torque, no forces, no forces in the, uh, in the X direction, that should say, and in the Y direction, we just have two support forces. Oh, great. A is equal to B. That's not, um, that's not hard for us to figure out, but it tells us absolutely nothing, right? We have uh, two unknowns in one equation. And so it's statically indeterminate, but we also don't have a point in the middle where we can say, oh, that spot is going to be moving. Uh, and so we don't have a compatibility equation. So here is where the force method is going to help us, right? How is it going to help us? Well, really what the thermal expansion is doing, we can think of that as sort of a force that's, a, you know, distributed through this whole rod, right? Each part of the rod is, um, expand, has an expansive force on it that's created by, you know, the interactions of the atomic structure. Um, and it's going to grow, if it was left, it would, it would expand a certain, um, amount, right? A delta F here. And so we're going to pretend again that say force A isn't there, that support force A isn't there. And then we would know how much this would grow by using our uh, linear expansion equation. So we say point B stays in the same place and we can find delta T, uh, the change caused by the thermal expansion. Uh, that has to be balanced by delta F, which is the change created by the force at support force A. So now we can say that delta T is equal to delta F. And we have ways that we can expand this. We know how to talk about deformation caused by a force. We now know how to talk about deformation caused by thermal expansion. Uh, and we sub those two equations in here. So there's our thermal expansion equation. There's our axial deformation equation. So what do we do now? Well, we solve this baby, right? So we find our th coefficient of thermal expansion, which normally we just look up uh, in the textbook or elsewhere. Uh, our modulus of elasticity, we'll uh, assume this is steel. 
uh, and we can solve this guy up here. So how much would the bar expand if there were no constraint at point A? So that's your first. Remember, we went from 60 degrees to uh, 120 degrees. So that's essentially your, the left side of your equation, right? All right, pause. And on to the next one. What force is required to keep the bar from expanding uh, in kips, kilopounds force? So here we're looking for F. Pause. And now what is the stress in the bar? Got one more after this, so we'll pause. So this, once you found that force, this is just the same as any kind of uh, any any kind of deformable bodies problem, right? We know what P is. We can find our cross-sectional area, so we can find our stress. And then you want to think about whether the stress in that bar is compressive or tensile. And that's it today. So essentially what we've done here is we took a, um, a thermal expansion problem and we used the force method. Um, we said what this will expand a certain amount by thermal expansion that has to be matched by uh, the compression created by the support forces. And nothing explodes. Well, maybe, right? Uh, we're going to talk soon about buckling, uh, and maybe that stress would be strong enough to actually cause the column to buckle.